Hi everyone, Helena here and uh, congratulations again on making it into the top 12. Now your brief for this first challenge in World Star Nail Artist is to create five nails, each inspired by a member of the Nail Coalition who are kindly sponsoring this challenge. And I'm joined by the incredible talent that is Hazel Dixon. So hello, Hazel. Welcome. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so she's going to give you a little bit of an insight into her to inspire your creations for this challenge. So Hazel, why don't we just go all the way back to the start and uh, why don't you tell everyone about your journey into the nail industry? Uh, well, I kind of got into it by accident. I love art and I love design and stuff like that. And yeah, when I had my third child, I had them all really close together within five years. So I needed something that would work around the kids. I looked at interior design. I looked at being a hairdresser and I looked at nails um, and interior design and being a hairdresser just didn't work around everything for me. So nails did because I could do a short intensive course. So I chose um, at the time there was only about three or four brands. So it was quite easy to choose who to go with. Um, so I did my initial training with um, Creative Nail Design, which is now known as CND. And yeah, I fell in love with it. Um, I thought it was going to be really, really easy. It absolutely was not. Um, <laughs> quite the opposite. Um, and I was left a little bit disappointed at the end of my course, not because it wasn't good, but because there was no nail art and no colour. <laughs> um, so that's when I realised, oh, I looked at all the portfolio of education that they could do. Yeah. And it kind of went from there. And then Easy Flow at the time had so much coloured powders and design stuff. So I ended up going all the way through their master's program. And I think I finished it within 18 months. I absolutely got right stuck in and loved it. And I just progressed from there really. And then 2009, I did my first competition, won my first competition. I think it was a bit of a fluke to be fair. <laughs> um, and I got the bug for competing um, pretty much within a couple of years. And then, and then went on from that, did so many courses, traveled around the world, actually, like doing courses with uh, Gabby Kovacs and all of them in Europe, um, going to America, trained with Gina Silvestro. She's amazing. Um, yeah. And then I'd won the big championships in the UK in 2011, which is when I, I met Frida. Um, and we weren't allowed to compete anymore in the UK comp. So... If you'd won it, you weren't allowed to do it for three years, I think the time scale was. So, yeah, it was like, oh, then we've got, a, the only other one was now Olympia. And it was like, oh, that was like for the big guns, that was. <laughs> and I was like, mm, we're not sure about this. But me and Frida were like, no, let's just do it. What have we got to lose? Do you know what I mean? So we started competing at now Olympia. Um, and I think I did that for a couple of years. And then I won winner of winners and nail art I won overall individual top won every category that I wanted to so yeah I absolutely love education I love competing won everything I ever wanted to and I left competing a couple of years ago um and now my last competition after 10 years was Orlando just before COVID so that would have been 2019 I think it was yeah um <laughs> Yeah, so I've done that. I've done R and D. I've done I've done loads of stuff. Um, you wear so many hats, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just so much. It's I love it. Just got an absolute passion for nails, anything and everything to do with it. Um, I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing now, but yeah, I am. <laughs> so, so what are you doing? Now? Talk us through like an average week in the life of Hazel Dixon. Um, most of it, um, I do still do clients one day a week um, because I feel it's important as an educator to ensure I'm keeping up with things. So I always use our own products on them. A lot of the time they'll test stuff out for longevity and wear. Um, so I love doing that one day a week, but the rest of the week it is all education and research and development on products more than anything now. Um, and I also do all the customer service, the emails, everything. So yeah, designing of labels is my daughter. Um, she does a lot of our graphic design and stuff. She's amazing. Um, but yeah, my typical day is getting up, checking emails, making sure everyone's happy. If they're not, sorting it out. 
um, having me in then yeah printing orders ready for Brett because Brett my husband he deals with the warehouse side of it on top of his full-time job um, so yeah he works about 15 16 hours a day bless him same as me so we don't actually see each other very much <laughs> but it's good you know work hard play hard <laughs> exactly that and when when was it that you launched your own brand and why did you want to launch it it was actually five years ago this month because we've got our little um summer extravaganza we're calling it which is an open day where we've got a load of uh, customers and people that are interested in the brand come in in two weeks time um well initially it was because I'm a distributor for accents and I have been for about eight years now so they're a, a global company that specialize in gel products um, so they don't specialize in acrylics or nail art or anything like that. So that's what I felt was missing when I was starting to distribute their products. It was like I was getting asked all the time for it. So I was like, mm. I did R&D for NSI for a few years um, with Denise Wright over in Philadelphia. So I did have the experience from the, in the background from doing all of that, working in the labs and developing products. And I always said then that I would never, ever do it. However, <laughs> I don't know. I was like, look, I know what I'm doing. I can do this. I know the regulations. And yeah, I just went for it and initially launched the, the acrylic line five years ago this month. And it's just snowballed from there. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not easy. It's not as easy as everyone thinks it is. You don't just slap a label on a product. Far from it. Um, there's so many regulations that you have to follow and you know, formulations and labeling and education that goes with it. There's so much more to it than what people realize. It literally takes up, yeah, probably five, six days a week, you know, of my time making yeah. sure it's running. So and you know. so you're you're an entrepreneur, you're a businesswoman running your own brand, you're still doing clients, you you write your own education courses and run online education as well. Yeah you're a spokesperson for the industry and you're an incredible nail artist. I mean, is there anything that you can squeeze in in your spare time that you like doing? Well, I do like to go drinking with my friends, but it doesn't happen very often, <laughs> probably once a month. But my other thing that I absolutely love doing is um, interior design, I guess is what you would call it. So I, I love a project so me and my husband finally bought a house after splitting up and getting back together won't go into the details but we bought a house last year and it needed doing from top to bottom we'd been living in it renting it for years but we renovated the whole place ourselves it's from I learned how to tile fit cabinets he learned how to plumb fit bathrooms and I love I don't know I just love the whole process um so and it's a bit like the way I see it, it's a bit like nails. I always do mood boards. Mm -hmm. So I always come up with mood boards when I want a specific color range, for instance, that we're launching. I'll put a mood board together to get that sort of vibe of what we want, choose colors from that. And I did do the same for the house. And we're doing the garden at the moment. So I've got all my pictures, my mood board. I just love it. That's my hobby, I guess. Is yeah, it's quite an intense hobby. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I think you're so right. It is a little bit like nails it's that attention to detail and it's putting yeah. all the components together to make an amazing finished result so it's you're all about the transformative hobbies I guess yeah, I you've got to have that vision of what it's going to look like at the end and that's the same I find the same with nails I'm always looking at yep this bit okay we've just got a plain set of nails now but the, I know what it's going to look like at the end so yeah it's that creative process and you know known how to get there in the end I guess absolutely now we know that you're a creative and you're an amazing businesswoman but how would your friends describe your personality <laughs> um <laughs> a bit crazy is what they say but I, I'm probably the loudest the craziest do the nuttiest things when I'm with a crowd of people that I know if you put me in a room with people that I didn't know, I would be sitting at the back being the quietest. And I don't know why, haven't quite psychoanalyzed that yet. I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I do some funny things and I've actually got quite a, a bad mouth. I do swear quite a lot normally, which isn't great. Um, but I have learned, because I'm now a businesswoman, that there's a time and a place and you can be professional. <laughs> 
um but yeah that's what I would say they would probably say yeah I'm a little bit out there are you into star signs at all a little bit yeah a little what bit star yeah. side are you? Sagittarius okay yeah so maybe that's something to do with it I don't know it might give us give our top 12 something to think about being a Sagittarius <laughs> what the yeah. what the traits are we'll see but um <laughs> I guess moving on to I mean I've obviously I've known you for for years and your nail creations are so versatile and out there and just your your skill range is vast but do you have a signature nail style something that people look at and think that's a Hazel Dixon I would probably say I'm quite well known for my fantasy nail art Um, it's probably where I made my mark I would say even though I can do it all um yeah and extreme nail shapes so something extreme over the top but with lots of detail. I love detail. I love shadowing, highlighting, layering, something that gives you that perspective of depth and 3D-ness, even if it's not. That's what I, I love. <laughs> Brilliant. Some great sort of tidbits there for our, for our finalists there. And in terms of the mediums that you like working with, obviously you've got your own brand that has that has such a, a, an amazing range of, of products in in the, from different nail systems, but do you have a medium that you prefer working with? Predominantly acrylic. It's what I initially learned with, and I think it will always be my favorite. Mm. Um, but I love detail with art gels and um, acrylic paints. Um, there's something about them particularly. I don't like doing art with gel polish particularly. I love color with gel polish, but I like the detailing to be done. Yeah, I, I use a lot of art gels for that predominantly. But acrylic is my go-to. It's just so, you can sculpt it as it's setting up. You can, yeah, there's so much you can do with it. So yeah, I'd say that's definitely my favorite. And um, I guess this is the, the, a difficult question for most people to answer, but do you have anything that particularly inspires uh, what you create um, in terms of your nail art? Um, if I'm being honest, normally it's clothing. Um, I love, I don't particularly wear it myself. <laughs> I'm quite plain Jane when it comes to clothes, if I'm honest. I don't like to stand out that um, for me. So, but my designs, I love to be, like I say, extreme and out there. So I love looking at um, all of the catwalk stuff when it comes through. Um, that inspires me a lot for patterns and designs and colour. So that would be is normally my go-to for inspiration. Awesome. And do you have any favourite colours that um, just personally that you love? Neons absolutely love neons in any form so even if it's a pastel neon I, I you know and I love the brights as well um they're my go-to I love because now it's coming up to that time of year we've actually got a range launching soon that's packed full of neons and I'm excited I just love the bright colors it makes you feel good makes yeah. you feel happy absolutely and um you mentioned earlier that you've got three children um so if if you're happy to share tell us about where you're from in the UK, um, you know, your children, if they, they like nails as well, you know, tell us a little bit about your home life and your, your setting. So I am from a little town called Brandon, which is in Suffolk, which is only about six, seven miles away. So I didn't move far. Um, I moved to Thetford after I met um, my, my husband and we were together for a long time. We did have a break. It happens. I'm not shy of talking about it. Um, and we split up, went our own ways and then come back together. And I think, you know, it is what it was meant to be. Um, and the, yeah, our three kids, they're all so different. Everyone says, you know, that you, you bring your children up and, you know, if something goes wrong, it's the parents' fault and stuff like that. But mine have all been brought up the same and they're all super, super different. So my eldest one, he travelled with me to America Estonia all over the place to be my model when I was competing and I've got a picture of him it's absolutely hilarious bless him and he's got these great big long stilettos on and he's posing with these nails in Vegas and he did get a bit of stick from his mates and they were like I don't care I'm getting a free trip to Las Vegas with my mum you're the stupid one not me you went all I've got to do is sit there for an hour and have my nails done um 
so he loves it he's quite creative as well and um, he, he's doing more sporty stuff now and um, he's doing his degree in in that so he's away at uni and I miss him a lot <laughs> he's 22 now believe it or not um and then my middle one it, they're always the trouble ones aren't they <laughs> um, love him dearly but yeah he is definitely my trouble one um he's just finding his feet now and settling down a little bit um so yeah he's he loves football and he loves working out at the gym he loves all of that sort of stuff he's definitely my naughtiest one um <laughs> keeps you on your toes I guess does it oh it's you can say that <laughs> Um, and then my daughter, she's still at college um, and she's so amazing at everything she puts her hand to. She's a little bit annoying, actually. It's just like, is there something that you can't do? <laughs> um, so, yeah, it doesn't seem to matter what she does. She can do it like the graphics and the designs and how she uses Photoshop and puts it all together amazes me. But yeah, she's amazing at football. Um, she made it through to um, a couple of years ago, um, the pre-rounds for playing for um, England's women football and stuff like that. I mean, it's just everything she puts her mind to, she's amazing at. Um, and she's really into psychology and criminology. It's just, you couldn't get such a broad array. She's a good mix of me and Brett, to be fair, because we're quite opposites, but she's good at that. Um, yeah, and then Brett, bless him. <laughs> um, one thing I love about him is he's not on social media. He's one of the only people I know that he's not on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. He, and he seems really happy. <laughs> he's not on anything. And he's just so laid back, easygoing, lets me do whatever I want to do. <laughs> um, yeah, and he works um, in the business. He packs the parcels and sends them out. So if it's wrong, it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> by the way not mine <laughs> um but yeah I'm, it's it's nice we've got to say we finally bought a house we've got our family home now um and it's just yeah it, it's nice everything seems to have worked out nicely yeah and in you said you were quite into interior design so now you've got your new house how do you how have you been styling it have you got kind of do you agree <laughs> on style and have you got a certain style that you gravitate towards I would say quite, I say modern, but classic. So it's not going to be outdated very quickly. I like clean lines. I do like quite muted tones. So I like, believe it or not, because my brow's the same. I like black, white, greys. And then I like to add a touch of colour with accessories so that they can be changed easily when I want it to. And I'm really into my greenery at the moment. I've made like this living wall in the living room, like with all plants and stuff on it with like wooden slats behind it um it looks lovely I love it it was every it's what I've envisioned and we've managed to do it yeah but I'm very impatient it's one of my downfalls okay. I want it done I want it done now <laughs> I'm not <laughs> very good at waiting <laughs> yeah absolutely and, um, just just to kind of finally sort of wrap up what uh, I mean you've achieved so much in your career uh what do you anticipate in the next sort of five, 10 years? What do you foresee for you personally? Not the industry, but for you. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that's a hard one. That's harder than the others. <laughs> um, not in the industry. I don't know. My whole life is the industry. So I think that's quite difficult. I'd like to travel a bit more with my family. A lot of the traveling I have done has been on my own or for business related or for competitions um so when I talk about the places that I've been a lot of the time they're you know they're all like oh like I didn't get to go and all that so I think traveling you know if I can take more time out to do that would definitely be something I'd like to do in the next five years um and try not to do it at the same time as work <laughs> <laughs> yes it's getting that balance right isn't it I guess mm -hmm. I just love everybody and I like even the girls that I met in America there's profile girls and Gina and them like they're so amazing and they've been so supportive of me as well that um I'm good friends with them as well so sometimes it's hard because it always crosses over because some of my best friends are in the industry I think there's only a couple that aren't um yeah so it is quite hard <laughs> how nice that you've got a, a job that you love and that you can um you know for, for the most part we all have our days where we're probably like oh my goodness but you've, yeah. you've got that lovely mix of of friendships within it and um what more could you ask them to do a job that you love 
Yeah, I think it'd be quite difficult if I didn't have friends in the industry because I think it would be quite quite lonely because mm. having friends as well, it means that you can have them conversations with them that you probably wouldn't, I don't know, your no, normal friends that aren't in it, they probably wouldn't understand where you're coming from or why you're upset or, you know, why you're so happy that you've won this award because your friends will be like, well, what does that mean? Do you know what I mean? Like, So it's good to have friends in the industry. It'd be quite a lonely place without, I think. Definitely. And, and uh, you can all cheer each other on and uh, we'll be cheering on our top 12 semi-finalists for this challenge. Like we'll it. be judging. You'll be judging their work when it comes through. So looking forward to seeing those Hazel Dixon theme nails. It's going to be interesting to see what they what they make of me and their interpretation of that. Never had it done before. So it'd be quite interesting to see what they think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, the challenge is due on the 15th of May at 8 a.m. Uh, British Standard Time. So uh, we will uh, wait until then and look forward to seeing the designs. But thank you so much for kind of sharing your story with us, Hazel, and providing lots of inspo. No problem. Good luck, everybody. <laughs>